positioning and what I'm going to do I'm going to take you through the steps of the permit of income and branding one of the things I've been able to recognize over the last 25 years involved in marketing and branding is this that your position on this permit has a direct correlation to the income that you are generating the money that you're able to make is directly related to how your existing customers and prospects are, have positioned you on this permit. So if you have a really good product, you have a really good service, and you, you are find yourself sometimes struggling, trying to understand why is it that people and companies that don't have products and services as good as mine, yet they're generating a whole lot more income. And that can be really frustrating for many of us. I've been there. I know it can be that so plus straight the difference is not the product it's not your service is a problem is ultimately how you are positioned in the minds of your prospects and your consumers because the way a person think about you will determine how they behave towards you now we all purchase products and services and what we are prepared to pay have a lot to do with how we feel about the particular brand, how we feel about the provider of the brand. That is why a lot of the major brands still continue to invest hundreds of thousands and even millions of dollars in brand awareness, in building their brand, in maintaining brand loyalty. So what I want you to do is I go through this permit, I want you to be able to identify where you are at, and then we're gonna look in terms of where you want to be. Are you ready? If you're ready, just let me see some twos in the chat here. All right. Lovely, lovely. Good, good. We're doing good. Are you enjoying this information? If you're enjoying this information, just give me a nod over here. Just nod ahead if you're enjoying this information. Good. Thank you. All right. So let's start at the first position. And this is the position where many uh, normally start at. Boom. The generalists. So in terms of your brand position, most individuals start as the generalist. This is the individual who comes into the industry and they're looking to be everything to everyone. Um, and they often believe this is the way for them to be able to get business. But one of the things you need to always remember is that if you come in as a generalist, the generalist is at the bottom of the permit. This is where um, there's a large number of players in the market. It's highly competitive. And as a result, it becomes very price driven. So if you are operating as a generalist in any market, in any niche, you're going to find that the prices are being driven down more and more. This is where you would have customers and clients coming to you and saying to you that Tom, John, or Jerry can do, um, offer the product of service at a far lower price. This is where the budget shopping is. And you definitely, as an entrepreneur, especially if you're solo and you want to grow your business or you want to 10X, you cannot be a generalist. If we look at what Uncle G uh, normally does, we recognize he doesn't try to serve everyone. There's particularly areas. I mean, his, his real estate, his, his marketing, um, his, his sales. Those are the areas that he focuses on. Now, if you find yourself in whatever industry you may be let's say for instance that you are into uh, someone mentioned a hair salon if you if you find yourself okay you're doing natural hair you're doing braiding you're doing weaves you're doing cuts for men cuts for women you're doing dyeing you're doing uh, makeup you're doing lashes all of these things you're doing uh, what will happen is that uh, you're just being too general 
And if we look in any field, even in the terms of the medical field, who's the, least, the lowest paid practitioner in the medical field? The general practitioner. Because there are generalists, because there are many of them, and we can start to search. So if you come into an industry and you are a generalist, you do not want to stay there very long because you're going to find it frustrating. You're going to find yourself struggling. Now, I am not saying that you cannot start as a generalist because sometimes a person may enter an industry, they may enter a market, and they may not be sure way to turn, they may not be sure way to serve. So they may be um, putting their feelers out, doing this basic research to be able to identify what is gonna work for them. So if that's your position, that is okay, but you don't want to stay there. And as you look uh, and on this diagram, you see the dollar signs on the side is realize that they're very small dollar signs because as a generalist, the pay is gonna be very low. So the generalists are always going to be the lowest paid persons in any particular field. So we want to move. Boom. Where do we move to? The first position beyond the generalists is the specialist. Now, if you went to your general practitioner and he said to you, okay, I've done some tests and you definitely need to see a specialist. What's the first thing that comes to our mind? Well, I can tell you in the Caribbean, the first thing that comes to our mind is that we'll have to pay additional medical expenses <laughs> because we know that the specialist is going to be charging a whole lot more. We know that the specialist in the most of one case is going to be, in many instances, it's going to be more than one visit. So I want you to start to look in terms of what area can I specialize in? And this is where we now go from being generalist to start now to target and even start to micro target. This is where the niche that you are serving, you've come from being broad and you're now going deep. So you're looking to serve fewer people, but with a specialized skills. Here it was this evening uh, before we started, uh, someone was asking about the you know, course building and there are many persons who may be able to help you to build a course, but then there are individuals where that may be their specialty. That may all be all that they are doing. All that they are doing because it's building courses because they are specialists. When we hear specialists, don't we automatically expect to pay more? I sure do. So the mere fact that you started to position yourself as a specialist, you start now to reduce the challenges and conflicts with price resistance because people expect to pay more. None of us in here expect to pay um, Grant Cordon or any of the other major um, salespersons $100 an hour for a consultation. As a matter of fact, if Grant was offering a consultation at $100, most of us probably will not take it <laughs> because we, there's an expectation. So what can you do to start to specialize? You may start to uh, identify the services or the products that you are going to focus on and you're going to start to uh, promote yourself as the specialist in that area. So I want to encourage you right now, if you are a journalist, Think about climbing the ladder to being a specialist. Are you enjoying this here? Are you, are you hearing me clearly? If you're hearing me clearly, give me a nod and, and put some trees in the chat because I just want to make sure that you're engaged and that you are enjoying this as much as I'm enjoying delivering it to you. Okay, there are the trees. Good. Okay, we have a forest. Beautiful. <laughs> All right. So you're generalist or you're specialist. We are positioning for 10x. We are positioning to 10x our brand, 10x our income, 10x our life. So uh, some may be satisfied at being a specialist, and that is okay because every individual needs to know exactly where they want to be positioned and what is going to work for them. But there are others who obviously want more. And for those who want more, here's the next step you need to go to. Boom. Trusted advisor. Are you a trusted advisor? And you may probably be asking, so, okay, Troy, what is a trusted advisor? A trusted advisor is a professional, whether you're producing or providing product or service, that your clients trust your word. They do not make any purchases uh, without first consulting you on that particular area. They accept 
you are a credible um, individual and they know that you have their best interests at heart. That is a powerful position to be in. As a trusted advisor, you pretty much lock yourself in with the client. It is like putting a electric fence around your clients so that when the competition comes, they can't get past the force field because the relationship that you have developed by providing superior service, by going beyond what your clients are expecting you to do has positioned you as their trusted advisor. I tell you, I have clients who will not spend one single dime on marketing without first consulting me, regardless of the source, regardless of where the person is coming from, regardless of how attractive the offer may be. Now, as a trusted advisor, the beautiful thing here is that you don't have challenges with getting paid because the client knows that you are here to offer real value, that you are helping them to reduce pain, you're helping them to increase pleasure, and they know that with you as a part of their team, they don't have to worry about that particular area. Isn't it, wouldn't it be awesome to have clients who love you, who, who appreciate what you do, who are happy to have you as part of their team, and who are happy to pay you what you invoice them. They don't quarrel, they don't quarrel, they don't bicker, they don't make noise about prices. They are happy to pay you. This is how you start to really see the growth in your brand. This is how you start to see the growth in your income. While many others out there running around trying to be the jack of all trades to everyone, you have positioned yourself as that trusted advisor. The client is happy they are elated, they are wowed, and you are not one of the first expenses because they do not see you as an expense. They see your product, your service, your relationship as a significant investment for them in terms of, of, of achieving their overall goal. That is where it changed. So you may be in advertising, you may be providing basic generalist services. As a generalist, for the client, you are an expense. As a trusted advisor for the client, you are a worthwhile investment. Am I making sense to you guys? Can you start to see how you can implement this into your own business, the existing ones you have now, and even the ones that you are gonna be looking to start because I know as this is a new, a new season, a new dispensation in business, the so people are gonna be doing things differently. And we wanna make sure that we are ahead of the curve and not behind. This is an awesome opportunity to really position your brand in such a way that it, you know, it just catapults you into a place where people respect, love, and are happy to do business with you. Okay. So for many years, I've been a trusted advisor, but I wanted more. Expert. Okay. Now, what does it take to be an expert? And one of the things I didn't say to you earlier is that I, I have the pleasure of, of lecturing. I'm a lecturer at university. Um, I'm a lecturer at our local community college, both in marketing. And, and when I'm, each time I have a class and I'm asking them about expert, uh, most persons uh, believe that to be an expert, you need a PhD. <laughs> or you need a master's, or you need some, um, some kind of, of professional designation. Hello, listen to me clearly. There is no, you have never ever seen a certificate from any university, from any college, any professional association that says expert. Because expert is in here. If you want to be positioned as an expert, you must first acknowledge and recognize yourself as an expert. But what happens to us? Most of us have some self-defeating mentalities and preconceived notions about what an expert is. Now, you look at, when you look at the people that you admire, how many of them have a PhD? 
There are three things, one, two, three things, that all the individuals that we admire as experts have done. And I'm going to share those with you this evening. And I'm going to encourage you to do one, two, three. Are you ready to hear the three things that you need to do to become an expert? And it, it does not include going to university. Now, I'm okay with university. I've gone to university. I, I have a degree. Um, I have multiple degrees. But beyond that, none of those degrees were, uh, were able to position me as an expert. Are you ready for the three things that you need to do to be considered an expert? <laughs> Go. Okay, I'm going to give them to you. One. The first thing that experts do is, is write. Every person you know as an expert, is they're right. So they're all authors. They all have books. Whether the books are successful or not, they've all published. They have books. So the one of the things you want to do, you want to write. You want to write your book. You want to write a blog. You want to write a, a newspaper articles. As a matter of fact, I remember about 20 years ago, um, Back in the day when newspapers were still popular, <laughs> I'm aging myself here. One of the things I did is I, I submitted articles to a business newspaper. They were unsolicited, but every week I would publish, or I, was, I would submit an article. Uh, and they were not published, but every week I would still send another. And after about three months, I got a paper, one of the business papers, and I saw one of my articles. And I was now a published columnist. And... I was not paid. I, I didn't even know at that time that persons were paid <laughs> to write articles. But what it did for me, it got me attention because then people started to recognize me as an authority figure because that is what you want. You want to have authority. You want to have credibility. And when others start to embrace your ideas, when others start to embrace your message, when others start to embrace your concepts, then they start to see you as the go-to person. They start to see you as an expert. And that is how it starts to grow. So writing is a very popular, very critical thing that you must do. Now, you probably have heard that the business card is the, the consultant, the coach. Uh, sorry, you've probably heard of the book is every consultant or coach business card. So I wanna encourage you to write. So even as you have some downtime now, um, one of the things that I have decided to do in this downtime is to actually write my book, to actually get it out of my head onto paper. Uh, and, I, and this is something I have, uh, one of my goals for 2020. Um, and I can look and I can actually see right there, um, the concepts of the book, I have it written out and it's right before me. And I'm gonna be using, using the next you know, six months or so to really put this book together. And I know that many of you have been thinking about putting, writing a book. Uh, you some have probably even started, but you haven't gone in any further. Now is the time to get writing. So one of the first things you wanna do, write. So the second thing you wanna do is to speak. Hey, again, again, a lot of the persons that we see are speakers. So they're speaking online, they're speaking offline, and now more than ever before, with all that is happening, is that there can be more and more speakers online. Uh, I remember when I first met um, Pete and he was asking in terms of our goals, and I said to him, my main goal was to get on stages, to be able to speak to audiences outside of the Caribbean. So when this opportunity was offered, uh, I jumped on it because I understand the importance of speaking because people can then hear your message. They can hear your passion. They can now feel what you are sharing. And this all helps to position how they feel about you. Remember, how a person feel or think about you will determine how they behave towards you. So if I'm giving you information that is useful, it is helpful, I'm giving you information that's going to help you to 10x, then you don't, you don't see me as a generalist. You don't see me as a specialist. You start to see me as a trusted advisor or as an expert because I'm talking about marketing. I'm not talking about sales. I'm not talking about um, social media. I'm talking primarily about one area. Even in terms of branding, tonight I'm talking primarily to you about positioning. There are many other areas in branding. But because of where I want a laser focus, and this is something that you need to do. So you need to start to speak. You need to get on your Facebook lives. You need to record your videos. And I know, and, and I'm, I'm, 
I'm very real here. I know a lot of the females have real challenges in terms of video. And I know um, realistic because I work with a lot of females that oftentimes they're judged by their appearance before persons listen to the message. And unfortunately, ladies, too bad, I'm sorry, but oftentimes some of your biggest critics are other females. It's sad. But we need to get past that and start to get our message out. We need to be able to, to, to get on live. You know, look past the, the way that your face may look. Get past how your, your voice is going to sound because I'm telling you, once you start recording, if you've never done it before, if you record a video or audio, the way that you sound to yourself is going to sound really, really strange and really awkward. But I'm here to show you the beautiful thing about that is that the way you sound and the way you look is what people see all the time. So remember, focus on your message. So you want to write, you want to speak, and thirdly, you want to teach. Yes, you want to start teaching. And I want to encourage you, I mean, within the next 30 days, to start teaching. Whatever, what, regardless of your area of expertise or your knowledge base, start to teach. You can start by sharing one-minute videos on your Facebook, your Instagram, your LinkedIn, whatever social media. Uh, if you have your website or you have your blog, uh, you can take some of the, the, the same blogs that you would have written and you can actually, you know, just, just voice it. If you don't want to show your face on video, you can show some still images, but you know, uh, or you can show some moving images. But the thing is that you want to start to teach because with teachers, it allows per you allows persons to experience what knowledge you have. It allows you to be able to transfer knowledge. And in terms of knowledge, I mean, all of us have a teacher from our life that we hold very dear, that we remember, because people remember the good things that you've done for them. And if you can teach a person something that is going to help to enhance their life, they will remember you. They will appreciate you. And that is the three things that every expert needs to do. Write, speak, teach. So here's a great opportunity. Write, speak, teach. And here's the thing. Now, you may be thinking about, okay, Troy, this sounds really good, but I don't have a lot of knowledge. You don't need a lot of knowledge. You just need some specific knowledge. Remember I said, we're going to micro-target. We're not going broad. We're going narrow. We're going to micro-target, and we're going to go deep. You know, you may be wondering, okay, where can I start to, to teach? What should I teach about? I mean, go to your, your, back to your social media. Um, what are the persons in your community worried about right now? What are their concerns? Um, and you can start to teach on those areas. You can start to speak on those areas. You can start to write on those areas. I mean, uh, within the next 21 days, um, persons are going to become numbed with all the negativity about this existing crisis, and they're going to be looking for a way out. And you can position yourself as an expert, as the person who's showing them the way out, providing helpful information, because people are looking for help. Okay? Do you like that? Do you, I mean, can, do you think that you can position yourself as an expert? Um, you can start building your brand as an expert, writing, speaking, teaching, writing, speaking, teaching. And that's what I have been doing for the last five years. I am now even more focused on going outside of my local market. And that is one of the reasons I'm on this call tonight, because, hey, this call gives me an opportunity not only to speak, but also to teach. So, hey, Pete. Hey, Tony. Thanks a lot for this opportunity, guys. I'm enjoying it. Good. Are you enjoying this content? Wow, I see two thumbs up from Pete, so that's good. Uh, I'm loving it. I'm glad that you guys are able to enjoy this because ultimately, I'm about empowering people so that they can do what they have been called to do. Now, you may have been seeing journalist, specialist, trusted advice expert. If you look on the side, yeah, look on the side, look at the number signs. Look at the amount of dollar signs there. Hey, you know, a guy would easily pay Uncle G $10,000 for a seat because he's an expert and he's going to bring experts to the stage. So we want to be closer there. And some of us might be thinking, okay, I can't do that. This is for someone else. That is not true. You have what it takes. Increase your knowledge base, increase your credibility, increase your 
authenticity, increase your authority, and you will be positioned as an expert. Okay, but it doesn't stop there, guys. It doesn't stop there. It goes beyond that in terms of positioning. The next position, the top of the pyramid, is a game changer. And as I listened to Rock last week, uh, I smiled because of something that he said. And if you were really listening, there's something that he said. And this is it. Boom. Celebrity. At the top of the pyramid of brand positioning are the celebrities. And I remember Rock said that he wanted to be a celebrity because he recognized that if he was going to be able to help more people, then more people needed to know about him. The thing with being the celebrity is that the requirements are very different from the others. Now, we all know of people who are celebrities for absolutely no reason than being a celebrity. It has nothing to do with their knowledge. It has nothing to do with their skills, with their product, with their service. It has nothing to do with the, the experience. The celebrity is all about a mechanism. For those who decided that they want to be a celebrity, I can say this to you. The first thing you need to recognize is that you cannot do it alone. There needs to be a machinery behind you. So all the persons that we know who are celebrities, some we may see, some we may not see, but they all have a well oil machine running in the background that is promoting them. I mean, you look at them and there's, and this is critical because what is really required is that you need a lot of press. You need to constantly be in the press. Um, you need the media to support you in, in becoming a celebrity. So you cannot become a celebrity without media. And, you, and I'm speaking about in terms of mass media. So you need to get on other people's stages. You need to be able to get in other, on other people's podcasts. You need to get on other people's conferences. You need to be in other people's books. You need to be, you know, um, on the news. And this is, uh, and you need to have your your machine, your people who are constantly looking for opportunities to be able to help to position you as a celebrity. Now. There's a, a, a warning that I often give to individuals who, who like to jump to the position of celebrity because you can have local celebrities and you're going you're gonna to have regional celebrities, you have national celebrities, and then you have international celebrities. Now, all of us in here know of Rihanna. Whether you're a fan of her or not, we all know Rihanna because she's a global icon. You know? And I'm proud to say, okay, she was born in the same island as I. You know, she grew up in the same island. So I'm from the same island as Rihanna. Okay. Um, but while Rihanna was never a, a local celebrity, um, I mean, she just shot to start him. Um, she was never a local celebrity. Um, it wasn't like she became a local celebrity and then grew. She just became a, a overnight sensation. And because there was a system behind her, if you want to be a celebrity, there must be a system behind you. But I also will warn you is that a lot of your privacy will go away because what drive the celebrity brand is news. Your fans and your haters equally want to know what's happening with you. <laughs> so if you decide that you want, even if you decide, okay, I just want to be a local celebrity or I want to be a celebrity only in my niche is that you then have to be prepared to share Part of, parts of your life with your people because one of the things that is required for celebrities is that your fans and your haters, they need to have news about you. They need to be able to talk about you. Uh, so as a result, they need to have information. They need to have content. And we often would hear that Uncle G would say, you know what, if you don't have enough haters, then you are, you're not popular enough. En enough people don't know you. And this is something that's very critical. So you need to be able to look past the haters, look past the negativity, because people will talk negative about you. Every celebrity that we know, that I know of, there are persons who are speaking negative about them. Because, and celebrities, in some cases, may even fuel the negative, negativity, and may even fuel the haters, and provide them with additional content, because they recognize that what is important as a celebrity is being known. People need to know you. Whether they like you or not, 
they know you. I mean, who's the most popular leader, uh, the most well-known, sorry, leader in the entire world? President Trump. Whether you like him or hate him, we know him. Kid, Uncle G. There are as many people who love Uncle G, twice as many probably hate him. Uh, some people just think he's just too much in your face. But that is okay. And we need to be okay with that if you want to be a celebrity. All right, so there you have it. Generalist, specialist, advisor, expert, and celebrity. Now, here's a question for you. Where are you now? Where are you now on that pyramid? Look at it again. By now, you probably made a quick sketch of it or you screenshot it. But where are you right now? And where do you want to be? Those are two questions that every 10Xer on this call and those who will be hearing the replay need to be able to answer. Because if you're not sure where you are, then you're going to have challenges knowing where you want to be. But once you can clearly and honestly with yourself identify where you are and then where you want to be, all that's then required is for you then to take the path. The solution is to start repositioning. Start repositioning your brand so that you can get from where you are to where you want to be. The mere fact that we are all on this call, the mere fact that we are all part of Uncle G's community is a clear indicator that we want more than we have, that we are not contented with what we have achieved. We are grateful, yes, but we want more. We want a 10X. Some people may want a 20X or 100X but we definitely want more. All of us here, I believe, aspire to being on the floor at GrowthCon, at the next GrowthCon. We all want to be there because we know it, that being in that area says that we have 10X. You know, that is the key. All right, so here you got it. I've just shared with you how you can power position, how you can change your brand, uh, I'm not making any major offer here this evening uh, like I would normally do on uh, other calls. But if you have questions, you, you can chat. If you want to um, email me, there is ideas at troyholder.com. Uh, I do have a, a six-figure um, branding um, program that will help you to get from where you are to where you want to be. I'm providing you with the guidance. Um, in terms of the marketing and the branding. And I did share with you earlier that uh, I am a trained graphic designer, so I can provide with you uh, with those assistance and the other areas of branding. If you're interested in that, um, you can find out a, a bit more about the, the packages at troyholder.com uh, forward slash six figure packages dot HTML. Um, is, you're not going to see any sales letter there. Um, you're not going to see any sales video. Um, all is there are, are the two packages that. Uh, that are available, but if you want to work with me,